Keskuskamen ku sauna hekilunta. Keskuskamen ku sauna hekilunta. So hello all. I am Eero Kilpi, the president of the North American Sauna Society. And as always, we have uh, Christopher, i.e. Risto and Sam here with me. So hello, Risto. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Gentlemen, how are we doing on this fine afternoon? We are doing great. It's uh, it's pretty beautiful in, in New York as we speak. Well, I was bird watching this morning. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't uh, couldn't agree more. Um, South Carolina is nice and sunny and warm. Chris, uh, I, I doubt uh, you can say the same. It's not too bad. You know, you get above 40 degrees. That's a warm day in the spring in Minnesota. That's that's right. Take it where you can get it. <laughs> well, today's episode is kind of unique. Um, we're going to kind of jump on um, some recent developments here in tech. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about AI or artificial intelligence. Um, and can artificial intelligence relate to sauna? Um, so in, in playing around with, uh, you know, some of the AI tools that are out there, um, I thought it would be interesting to ask it about sauna and what, what could it find out about sauna? Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, some of the things that AI is, is doing currently and, and how maybe we could use it to benefit, uh, sauna and sauna in North America. Um, Arrow, Chris, have you guys played around with any of the AI tools yet? I've played some, I've played some, and it, it's kind of interesting that, that it, it, it really is, you know, onto something. You know the whole thing. It's just like, and because because there's this division between the different types of sauna, and sort of like, uh, at not even that I pushed it myself, and we've been talking about this before, but the uh, I, I asked uh, the, uh, the 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 Bard um, app about sauna, and the Bard app started talking about the Finnish sauna, which I never mentioned to it, which which is kind of interesting. Well, Google, Google's been spying on you long enough, Arrow, that it probably <laughs> knows not to make that mistake. I hear you. I hear you. Um, yep. The algorithms know Arrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With They're the like, funny fin finish start. name. Don't get this yeah. wrong. Yeah. 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 What, what about you, Risto? What did you, did you play? Well, I've been a, I've been a tech geek my whole life. And, um, this one caught me a little unaware. The, the history of AI is, is a history of having lots of big promises, expecting AI to really um, just blossom. <clears throat> and we have like robots walking around like data from Star Trek, but then, but then it never really quite plays out. So the people that have been in the field of AI have been disappointed for years and years, expecting it to be much further along than it is. Um, but as we're, you know, we're speaking in the early part of 2023 in April and a few weeks ago, um, one specific AI application chat GPT started to really kind of gain traction and people starting to know about it and play around with it. And it's a, it's a chat interface where you can type back and forth with it. <clears throat> and that's nothing new. That's been around for a while. There've been different chat bots with, with some sort of, in, you know, quote unquote intelligence behind them that you could communicate with. And sometimes they seem more human and less human, but this one, this one is a huge leap forward. This one kind of caught me by surprise. And it may be as someone who's been really familiar with technology this could be the most impressive technological thing that I've seen in my lifetime for, from the 80s onward. Um, even maybe more impressive and impactful in the future um, than even like smartphones. Okay. Um, even more so than the internet, maybe. You know, we're kind of at that level. And right. the reason I say that is because as you talk with this thing, it's it's a 
It's a language model that's been trained on all kinds of data and human language. And it's so much, it's been trained on so much that it's able to answer questions in a way and kind of like argue back and forth with you and provide you kind of this level of detail. It can kind of, it can kind of reason and think in a way that I've never seen any computer stuff do before. But that's not to say that it's perfect or, you know, that it's not still needs work. I'm sure you've run across this, Sam, where it doesn't quite give you the answer that you might want. It might make some stuff up. Yeah, yeah. So um, you definitely, I think right now with what we're seeing with at least chat GPT, which I've had the most experience with, um, you, you get what you put into it. Um, if you ask it a simple question, you know, what is an apple? It's going to give you the, you know, the definition of, of a fruit apple, and it's not going to, you know, challenge your way of thinking about an apple. But if you prompt it or, or kind of ask it to provide you information in a way that is a little bit different by, for example, hey, hey, chat GPT, I want you to pretend that you're an arborist. And you're, you know, you're an expert in fruit trees and, you know, you live in North America and you're in this region, maybe you want to, maybe yourself, you want to plant trees and you're trying to ask an expert. So you kind of make it pretend that it's an expert and you can get some different responses. You know, it might say, well, hey, this is a little bit harder than this, or hey, you know, this you're going to have an easier time with based on your climate X, Y, and Z. So the more information that you can provide to it up front about your question and some background about, you know, the, the response that you're getting, um, you can kind of tailor it to, to be a little bit more conversation conversational and then kind of challenge you. You can kind of then go back and forth with it. So I always start a lot of my prompts or a lot of my inquiries with, with AI as, you know, saying, hey, we're going to pretend that you're an expert in design. You're an expert in architecture. You're an expert in whatever field it is that you're, you're trying to gain more knowledge about. And I feel like that has been yielding a lot better results rather than just the definitions out of a you know, dictionary. Um, or I, I love when you ask it to explain it to me like I'm a, a child. You know, use some analogies, use, you know, if thens, whatever, um, and it can absolutely uh, tailor its responses to that type of an audience. So what I had, what, you know, in, in one of the first things that I did was I asked it, you know, hey, what's a sauna? Or um, then I went a step further, what is good sauna? And you, you start asking it for some, some more definition. You ask it, why did you say that? Or why, did you, why do you think that? And that's where you can really get conversational with it. Um, just for an example here, I asked ChatGPT, what is good sauna? And its, it's first line was, a good sauna is one that provides a safe and comfortable experience for the user while also offering the benefits of heat therapy. Some key characteristics of good sauna include, and then it goes on to list five different bullet points about sauna, and then telling you why, in conclusion, why it came up with those five points. Um, I love that, that the actual five points that it gave me, number one was proper ventilation, number two was adequate heat, number three was proper humidity, number four was cleanliness, and number five was comfortable seating. So it, to, to chat GPT, it thinks those five things are what make up a good sauna. Now, is that true or not? That's always going to be up for debate. Yeah, it is. It is missing sausage. So we know, obviously, <laughs> it didn't quite get the essence of sauna. Yeah, there, there was no mention of Miller Lite. So I'm, I am writing an email to OpenAI to hopefully retrain its model. But, but that's, no. yeah, that's no. a good point. And we should make this caveat, like right here at the beginning, since this, all this stuff is new, people are going to run into this and need the, need this disclaimer for AI that it's just like dealing with a random forum on the internet. Yeah. Take everything with a grain of salt. It will, it will sometimes make up things. It will get things totally wrong. And, and depending on like, 
what the general consensus is on a topic, it will tend to go with that. So if mm -hmm. the general consensus on a topic is wrong, if the data it's been trained on for sauna, if people generally don't have a good idea of what sauna is, it will generally give that, you know, that faulty viewpoint back. In fact, <clears throat> my brother and I were asking, we asked it a question. We asked, um, has there ever been a sauna on an airplane? And it made up a story of a Russian. We think it's made up because we couldn't verify it. And you should always verify this information from AI. Yeah. It made up a story of a Soviet uh, airplane that was given to the Finnish government and that they fitted it with a sauna on it. And it was called like Kavisto One or something, even gave it a name. Huh. But then we asked it to fact check itself and it couldn't find where that information was from, nor could we find where that information is. So you do want to be careful. Sometimes it will make connections where they shouldn't exist. Sure, sure. But that's kind of interesting, though, to say, you know, like um, if some, if I recall, you right, you know, said that one of the first topics that the uh, that 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 AI gave you was the ventilation part, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and this is obviously something that we've been talking ever, ever since we started the whole thing. You know, it's just like you know, the ventilation of the lack of is one of the major issues that we have uh, in North America. So uh, how do we see, like, um, you know, I'm, I'm a father of two, and, and you can't explain to your kid on the phone or, or, or verbally how to ride a bike. And it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of the same thing with, with the sauna. You, ca you can't, if somebody doesn't understand sauna, it, it's kind of a problematic, you know, uh, uh, a project to try to explain, you know, why you would, you know, do the authentic, the real thing. So how do we feel about the fact that that if is 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 the artificial artificial intelligence is it giving us means to maybe make people maybe to understand a little more because obviously the AI is onto something here as we speak. Oh, a absolutely. Um, you know, I just reading a, re a recent article. Um, I can't remember if it was Forbes or Bloomberg or one a business. Uh, CNBC style um, article, but it was saying that AI is going to impact about 300 million jobs over the next few years. Um, and so this is going to be as integrated into our daily lives, if, if it already isn't. Um, like Risto said, this is just as big as the iPhone. This is just as big as, you know, Pong being the first video game. Um, this is a, a, a real landmark moment in technology that it has long lasting effects. And I, I think, you know, there are obviously a lot of unknowns still in, in how well or how, you know, which direction this is going to go. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, like the home assistants are going to get infinitely better. Um, you know, the Alexas and Google Homes of the world are going to be much more conversational, much more able to give you, um, you know, some good information. You know, I, I would love to be able to have this thing and, you know, just say, hey, uh, give me a recipe, uh, an Indian recipe with the following ingredients that I have in my fridge. Um, those types of things you can already do with a lot of different apps. But again, that's, uh, you know, some pretty soon it's going to be conversational, pretty soon it's going to be intuitive, and it's not going to be so clunky. Um, you know, before, you know, texting and using the internet on a phone, I remember having a, an old Blackberry that had a little ball in the center of it, you know, and that's how you navigated the mouse. And now everything is touchscreen. And I think that is going to be vindicative of where we're going to go with AI. AI right now is that old trackball mouse that you had to get the air duster out, you know, and spray out the lint. That's where we're at right now. Pretty soon it's just going to be, hey, uh, I was already kind of thinking that way or, hey, it's going to finish my sentences or, hey, it's already going to know it's four o'clock. Sam usually likes to have a sauna right around now. Maybe I could get hooked up to my Wi-Fi and if I have a an electric sauna controller or something like that, maybe I can, you know, use AI in that regard too. Um, a lot of easy implications there that I just spoke of um, that are definitely doable now with where we're at. Um, and so I, I think, 
when people really get down some rabbit holes with it, I think that is just going to encourage them to learn more um, about certain topics because they're, when you go out onto the internet and you Google something and you're trying to find out information about it, you might get skewed in one direction or another based on your previous searches or based on previous purchases. And you're going to maybe only get one viewpoint or one opinion from wherever you landed on, you know, that page where I think this is going to be a lot more uh, general based and, and hopefully it's going to get to a point where, um, you know, bias is, is reduced um, and more common sense is built into it. But I love the fact that when I ask it about sauna, it, it defaults to traditional Finnish sauna. Um, and, and so that to me is very encouraging because I know that the, these language models are, are based off of just all the text that is out there um, that they feed into it. So there's a lot of, like Risto said, there's a lot of bad information too that it knows. Um, you know, every time you get advertised a the sauna gadget, a blanket or a tent or whatever it is, um, AI knows about those things too. And it doesn't, it, it's never experienced a sauna. So how does it know what a good one is or not? It's based on opinions that it has been trained on. So um, you can definitely go down some rabbit holes there and challenge it. Is, is this good or bad? I, I just asked, I just asked AI, what, what's the best size for a sauna? Just should we, uh, should we you know, take a look? Yeah, absolutely. Let's let's uh let's take take a trip uh, with Alice here down the rabbit hole. So if if you're uh, if you're on the video, you're going to be able to see us try Chat GPT out and kick the tires, see how good AI is at understanding sauna. If you're on the audio podcast, we'll try and kind of narrate some of this or summarize it for you. Absolutely. Um, so. Here we see uh, chat GPT's interface. It's very uh, monochromatic. It's just en enter text, hit enter, and it'll generate responses. So I just asked it, what is the best size for sauna? And it came up with pretty much a very simple four paragraph uh, response saying the best size for sauna can depend on several factors, including the number of people who will be using it, the available space and personal preference. Right there, I love that it starts out by kind of prefacing it, hey, there are different things that are going to go into your decision making about what the best size for a sauna is, and here are some variables that will dictate that. But it then goes on to say, in general, the recommended size for home sauna is about four to six square feet of floor space per person. So for example, a sauna that accommodates two to four people would typically be around four to eight square feet in size, while a sauna that accommodates four to six people would be around 12 to 18 square feet in size. And, and it goes on to basically saying, if you have larger space available, you may you know, and want to accommodate more people, you can definitely go bigger and, and, and better. But ultimately, the best size for your sauna will depend on your personal preferences and needs, as well as the space available in your home or other location where you plan to install it. So it doesn't tell you flat out, hey, the best size for sauna is six by eight, and it doesn't just plant its flag in the ground. It kind of challenges you to, to think about, okay, I want a couple people in my sauna, and I only have X amount of you know, space to work with. I love that it, it um, kind of gives you a little bit of insight into how it thinks by saying a sauna that accommodates, you know, two to four people would typically be around four to eight square feet in size. You know, so I know when I've designed saunas in the past, I kind of used a rule of thumb of about 36 inches of upper bench space per person. So if your bench space, you know, if you had nine feet of bench, you could easily accommodate, you know, three large people on there, you know, and that, that's one thing that I've always kind of talked about, you know, how, how much do you like each other? How, how close do you want to be sitting next to, you know, the, the, your sauna partners? And I love that it, you know, it, it does kind of give that um, some food for thought. Arrow, what would you, what would you say about uh, chat GPT's response to this? 
The, uh, it, it, it's super appealing. It's super appealing, and I, I, I just uh, you might have it there somewhere. But I'm interested in in uh, you know ingredients of a good sauna bait. So so it, probably it's talking about the heat and uh, well, actually we touched that before the ventilation and and, and the whatnot. Yeah, and and just for those at home and and who want to see the video, uh, my first question of the day was what is good sauna and we talked about those things and it does go into some good detail about what is proper ventilation and why do you need it and it, it says a good sauna should have good ventilation to ensure fresh air is flowing into the sauna and to prevent the buildup of excess moisture or carbon monoxide i think that's a great definition of what proper ventilation is it's not saying how to do it but it's saying what it should accomplish so the, the how you get there may vary, but basically it's saying you want fresh air so that you don't have too much moisture and too much carbon monoxide. I think we can all agree that's a general you know, benefit of ventilation. Yeah, I would, I would question the carbon monoxide part. Mm -hmm. um, most of the discussion online is about carbon dioxide that we're ex sure. exhaling. So I would be curious why and this is the nice thing about the AI is you can ask it follow-up questions. Absolutely. You know, why did you say carbon monoxide versus carbon dioxide? You know, and then mm -hmm. it should be able to provide some rationale behind its answer. Yeah. So just, yeah, you know, should we consider carbon dioxide? And can you ask it why it, can you also ask it why it said carbon monoxide? Absolutely. And so now it's saying carbon dioxide is not typically a factor that a factor that's considered when designing or using a sauna, while carbon dioxide is a natural byproduct of respiration and can accumulate in poorly ventilated spaces. A well-designed sauna will have proper ventilation systems in place to ensure fresh air is circulating and carbon dioxide is not building up to unsafe levels. However, it is important to note that excessive levels of carbon dioxide can be harmful to human health and individuals with certain respiratory conditions may be more sensitive to its effects. If you have concerns about carbon dioxide levels in your sauna or any potential health effects, it may be best to consult with a qualified professional or physician for guidance. So yes. that's, that's, I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. Although this is our, fr our friend Walker would disagree with that, I think. Sure. Um, and this is where it falls down a little bit, is it's not necessarily great at things that are more towards the bleeding edge. And like mm -hmm. I mentioned, Walker from Trumpkin's Notes, he's been testing carbon dioxide, him, and I think Lossie has done some work maybe in this area. Yeah. Questioning like, is the role of carbon dioxide something that we haven't been taking into account enough? Sure. It, you know, and so it wouldn't have access to that data or it's not going to really move the needle for it. Right. But I, uh, I do think future iterations like we're seeing with chat GPT um, is using a, a 3.5 model. There's a four model out there. They're working on a five. You know, there's a lot of advancements. Um, you know, the, the most recent model of, of this can pass the bar exam in the top 10%. Um, where the previous iteration was in the bottom 10%. So that kind of exponential growth and, and problem solving ability, I wouldn't doubt that you're going to be able to feed this thing some information saying, hey, I have a six by eight wood burning sauna. Um, the firebox is approximately 22 inches wide by 12 inches deep, whatever that may be. I think it's pretty soon it's going to be able to calculate and 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 basically generate models in and be able to kind of tell you, hey, if you don't have ventilation in a room that size, given the variables, you're going to have carbon monoxide, dioxide, whatever gas levels of X, Y, and Z. And I think pretty soon it's going to be scarily accurate at doing so. Could, could you ask it about carbon monoxide? I'm, yeah. curi I'm just curious because that's a surprise for me. Yeah, while you are doing that, so so let let's get back to the basics. So carbon monoxide, when it comes to sauna, that's a that's a burning gas, and 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 I, with my background with sauna, when when you heat up a smoke sauna, when you heat up a smoke sauna, that's an issue. So you have to take take care of the carbon monoxide, and and how well 
you know, ventilated, those smoke saunas are usually carbon dioxide. It's not an issue at all. So, yeah, that's, that's why I was surprised. Yeah. Uh, so we, I guess we, we call, could ask it, at, we could ask it for a normal wood burning heater or an electric heater. Um, should there, is there usually carbon monoxide put into the air? Like Arrow saying, I've only heard of that for Savu sauna. Exactly. It's the, it's the, it's a smoke sauna thing. I just like you have to have that first starter, you know, throw on the rocks to Lulu to get rid of the carbon monoxide, and after that, you're gonna be fine. Hmm. Interesting. So I, so I just asked Chat GPT, do sauna heaters give off carbon monoxide? Um, its response is. Sauna heaters do not give off carbon monoxide directly, but they can produce carbon monoxide if they are not functioning properly or are not properly ventilated. Sauna heaters are typically designed to burn wood, gas, or electrically powered heating elements. And if these are not working properly, incomplete combustion can occur, leading to production of carbon monoxide. So I think that is a, a pretty good blanket statement. Um, because I think we all know that, you know, carbon monoxide, I don't think you're going to have to have a problem with that in a, in an electric, you know, stove, but yeah, my, my wood burning sauna, if it wasn't properly vented to the outside, my, you know, my sauna room would fill up with smoke. So, um, you know, what it's saying to me sounds pretty, pretty reasonable. Yeah. The, and this is where, this is where people need to understand that this is that this uh, chat GPT especially isn't so much like a vending machine for answers that you just take and just go with. Mm -hmm. So for instance, you want to, <clears throat> the answers are as good as the questions you ask, ask it initially and the follow-up questions. You really need to ask those follow-up questions and dig down deeper and double check everything. So yeah. if someone read the initial response, they might think, oh, carbon monoxide could be an issue Mm -hmm. with my sauna and be worried about it but as you dig down deeper you would find out and people who have used a lot of sauna know this that it's just like if you have a wood burning heater that's not drafting out properly or has some sort of leakage then you have a problem but otherwise it shouldn't be a big issue and that ventilation is mostly not for carbon monoxide it's for something else just getting you fresh air and eventually you right. can get there with chat GPT, but it requires you having to ask it a lot of questions, which is nice because you can do that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can really get off the wall with it, or you can just ask it, hey, give me some instructions on how to build some sauna benches. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it might be able to give you some ideas and you can always ask it again too. Hey, try again. Or, hey, can you, can you, rephrase that response so that I understand it a little bit better. Um, use less technical jargon or, hey, use more technical jargon because I'm a, you know, I'm a master architect and I understand, you know, X, Y, and Z. You can have it, you know, fill that, fill that void for sure. Super interesting. So um, I, I think we try to keep this uh, a little concise so so can we ask now the uh the artificial intelligence something more about the good sound abating experience or did we already ask that yeah so um let's let's think of a, a good question here and and i'm gonna i'm gonna write a prompt to maybe get a little bit less of a scripted answer so um i'm gonna ask it to pretend you are a sauna expert and a master builder. How would you go about designing a good Finnish sauna in my home? So it, it starts off by saying, as a sauna expert and master builder, here are the steps I would take to design a good Finnish sauna in your home. So determine the space available. That's your first step in, in design. So I love I love that it starts, that's where I would start. 
Uh, the first step in designing a finished sauna is to determine the available space in your home for the sauna. Saunas can be built in a variety of sizes and shapes, so it's important to choose a location that can accommodate the size of sauna you desire. And then choose the type of sauna. There are several types of finished saunas, including traditional wood burning saunas, electric saunas, and infrared saunas. Each uh -oh. type has its own advantages and disadvantages, so it's important to consider your preferences and budget when choosing the type of sauna you want to build. So we, we got a red flag there, right? There's, there's absolutely nothing finished about infrared saunas. So um, it, it's based off the information that it has. It, it does kind of know that there are differences in sauna, but um, mm -hmm. it didn't really put two and two together that what I was asking it is a Finnish traditional sauna with rocks, steam, you know, and, and, and high heat. So now it's saying to choose the location, design the layout, choose the materials. Um, you know, what I, what I love here is it, it just keeps going. It gives me seven different points, install the sauna, finishing touches, um, to kind of go back a little bit, choosing the materials. Um, the materials used in a finished sauna should be durable, heat resistant, and resistant to moisture. Common materials include cedar or other soft woods for the walls and benches, and a heat resistant material such as tile for the floor. It is also important to choose a sauna heater that is the appropriate for the size of the sauna and the type of heating method that you have chosen. That right there is, is awesome. If, if I was a novice, let's say, let's say I'm, you know, I'm about to go talk to a home builder, I'm about to go talk to a, a sauna dealer or builder, um, and I'm going to do some, do some homework here. Um, I'm going to ask about these things. Now, I'm not going to, maybe, maybe I'm not going to present myself as having all that information. But now I have a great checklist of questions that I can ask a sauna professional about, hey, you know, I've heard that cedar and other softwoods are good for the walls and benches. What are some other softwoods besides cedar that I could use? You know, and, and you could also ask that of chat GPT. And let's see if it'll talk about spruce or aspen. I mean, I would love to see it talk about spruce. Um, what I'm hoping it talks about pine. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love the the sound and design part that it takes into account the, the 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 dressing area and the showers and the whatnot. So it it really is an, an advanced. Let's see oh, what it says here. It's it's yeah. knocking it out of the park. I have a feeling. So I asked it, what are other some other softwoods that we could use? Um, and it said there are several types of softwoods uh, besides cedar. Uh, the first being hemlock. Hemlock is a light colored wood that is commonly used in saunas. It is known for its resistance to warping and cracking and its pleasant aroma. Yeah, hemlock is a very clean, you know, pretty, uh, pretty light um, softwood. I, I enjoy a good hemlock sauna. I've uh, installed many. Uh, pine. Pine is a popular choice for sauna walls and benches due to its affordability and availability. It has a light color and is relatively easy to work with. All right. Can't agree more. Can't agree more. Um, and I love that it says it's it's popular because of its affordability and availability, which are absolutely true. Um, goes on to say spruce. Spruce is a soft word, uh, softwood that is similar in appearance to pine, but has a slightly darker color. It is known for its strength and durability and is a good choice for sauna construction. 100% true, and I definitely agree with that. And last, it does mention redwood. Redwood is a softwood that is known for its resistance to moisture and decay. It has a reddish color and is a good choice for outdoor saunas or in areas with high humidity. Uh, I haven't worked with redwood in the past, um, and I don't think a lot of people are going to think that redwood is on the list there. Um, but hey, 100 years ago, before it was illegal to cut them down, it might have been a great option. Well, well, fun fact, as I've been as I've been reading about older sauna in the United States, from the late 50s to probably maybe about the mid 60s, even the early 70s, 
Redwood was the cedar of that time. Cedar was wow. hardly mentioned. Uh, you know, m- most of it was Redwood. So all the advertisements say Redwood. Um, Interesting. <clears throat> I, and I suppose, I mean, and we're seeing, we're kind of seeing cedar go down that same path as the Redwood, um, you know, with yeah. limited availability and, and it's increasingly becoming more of a protected uh, wood species uh, in certain areas. So it'll be interesting to see when cedar goes, uh, goes that way. Let's, um, let's, let's, I want to test to see, I'm going to give a little test. So we used red pine in our build, mm-hmm. which isn't the best choice for sound as it works, but the scientific name for red pine is Pinus resinosa. So it's a very resinous pine and it, it sure. releases a lot of resin which is all over the walls and everything eventually it stops but it's not great could you yeah. ask it how how would red pine be uh sure. for the walls? and hopefully we'll see how smart it is if it says that maybe it's not the best choice <clears throat> so again it does say that it's durable and affordable similar to the pine above um It does say when using red pine for sauna walls, it's important to ensure that the wood is properly prepared and treated for use in high temperature and high moisture environments. The wood should be kiln dried to reduce moisture content and prevent warping or cracking. Um, I 100% agree with that. I've, I just built a pine sauna with kiln dried uh, white pine and it, uh, it, it really hasn't done much you know because it's coming out of that kiln at maybe about seven percent uh moisture um where if you go and cut down a tree in your backyard today that isn't isn't dead you know your moisture levels are going to be up in the you know 80s and 90s um so getting that kiln dried really kind of locks it in and i feel like that that's a great point i love that it mentions being kiln dried it goes on to say yeah does it say say anything about the resin we could just ask it what are the downsides maybe yeah absolutely so i i do see a potential red flag here um it also it's also important to apply a protective finish to the wood to help prevent damage from the heat and moisture in the sauna a clear water resistant sealer or stain can help protect the wood and enhance its natural beauty now listeners i if you know anything about sauna don't put any chemical that you can't spell inside the sauna. You, you never should be using any polyurethanes, any type of, you know, poly anything inside of a sauna. Um, that would let it do its thing. And, and please do not paint or stain or seal any interior sauna wood. That's for your health. And in your safety, as well as any patrons of your sauna, it's going to off gas, you're going to burn your eyes, you're going to have trouble breathing, it is not healthy for you. So but that's this my, is, my, ask yeah, right. you'll see that advice online, which is probably where the AI gets it, right, which it comes back to again, don't treat the AI as like the all knowing source of information. Treat mm-hmm. it like you would advice on a forum. And we're not always so good about this, but on a forum, you should take everything that you read with a grain of salt and always ask why. Always double check that. Always ask for the other point of view. You know, So now we're asking, are there any downsides for red pine? It's always good to ask for what, what's the opposite viewpoint. Perfect. And, it, and right away, it gets to work on generating a response faster than I could ever type. <laughs> and it says there are some potential downsides to using red pine. Uh, one of the main concerns with red pine is its tendency to develop knots and other imperfections that can detract from its appearance. Additionally, red pine may not have the same natural resistance to moisture and decay as some other softwoods commonly used, like uh, cedar or hemlock. Another potential downside of pine is that it may not be heat resistant as some other woods. While it can be durable when properly prepared and finished, it may not hold up as well over time as some other softwoods. I would agree with that. Um, Over time, pine can potentially uh, deteriorate a little bit uh, more depending on how much you use your sauna, how much water you're using in your sauna. 
and it goes on to say red pine may not have the same aromatic properties as other softwoods, such as cedar or hemlock. Um, I know some people are very sold on the cedar smells, um, but it really doesn't mention anything about resin or sap like Chris was kind of looking for. So um, again, take everything with a grain of salt here, people, but I think just by getting some good background information, it'll put you on the path to finding out a little bit more than maybe you thought you were going to find. But that is a big, that is a big um, blind spot that it had, even mm -hmm. though we asked it very specifically about the downside. Yeah. Um, you know, I spoke with Neil Nils, who builds saunas in Vermont, and he warned me about red pine right from the get go. So, mm -hmm. you know, the AI, as good as it is, it's good for the general perspective on the knowledge on, you know, various knowledge, but it's not as good as like someone who's spent a career doing this stuff and, and learned the tiny bits. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. so in order to wrap things up, could you ask one final question and ask how the, uh, the upper bench podcast could help the sauna bathing people for a better sauna? So Sam's just at, he's typing it in now. He's saying, yeah, so I'm going to, how could a podcast it. help? Yeah, how could a public podcast about sauna help North America grow sauna? Or um, how do we want to phrase that question? That's a good point. Um, uh, how about develop an appreciation for sauna and learn about it? And you can have a pretty complicated question, so it doesn't have to be short. How's that? So how could a public podcast about sauna help North America develop a better uh, appreciate appreciation? Appreciation, yes. Appreciation of sauna practices. There you go. That's yeah, pretty, that, that's, pretty that's general. Go that. shoot that one, yes. And it's going to work already. Um, we're seeing multiple bullet points being generated. Um, it starts off by saying a public podcast about sauna could help North America develop a better appreciation of sauna practices in a number of ways. And here are some potential benefits. It gave four bullet points. Um, first one being education. And I think we can all agree that's exactly why we're here. We're, yeah. we're here to educate people about sauna about sauna culture and, and some of the best practices for it so it goes on to say a podcast could provide an opportunity to educate listeners about the history and cultural significance of sauna practices as well as health benefits and techniques for using sauna safely and effectively by increasing knowledge and understanding of sauna listeners may be more likely to incorporate sauna practices into their own lives and appreciate the role that sauna plays in other cultures. Uh, it would, you give me the rest of the day, I could not have said it better than that. It, and, and it said it faster than I could think it. Um, the ne next bullet point is accessibility. Saunas are not always accessible or affordable for everyone particularly in North America, where sauna culture is not as widespread as in some other parts of the world. A podcast could provide a way for people to learn about sauna practices and potentially try them out in a safe and accessible way, such as visiting a local public sauna or building their own home sauna. Again, I think that that nailed it right on, right, the, uh, right on the money. Yes. Yep. And our last two bullet points here, first one, uh, community building. I love that it said community building. Sauna culture is often built around a sense of community and shared experiences. A podcast could provide a platform for building connections among people who are interested in sauna, whether they are experienced practitioners or just learning about it for the first time. Listeners could share their own experiences, learn from others, and potentially even connect with local sauna communities. Um, again, right on the head. I love... Um, Risto shared a story of his friend that listens to our podcast while he works. Um, that's awesome. I, I love that people are going to be able to listen to 
um, our podcast, other podcasts about sauna and, and, and hopefully learn something and, and get a little bit more enjoyment out of it. Um, it. Last but not least, it says the environmental awareness. Many traditional sauna practices involve the use of natural materials such as wood for the sauna stove or herbs for sauna infusions. By promoting an appreciation of sauna practices, a podcast could also raise awareness of the importance of sustainable practices and the use of natural materials in other areas of life. Overall, a public podcast about sauna could help to raise awareness of this important cultural and wellness practice, promote accessibility and inclusivity, build community, and promote sustainability. I think we have a new mission statement, boys. <laughs> yeah, we do, don't we? That's <laughs> awesome. Yes. Um, I, I, can't, I can't believe just in the, the short time that we've spent together here, we've asked it a few questions. It's been, you know, if I had to give chat GPT a grade, like an overall grade on what it knew about sauna and what it presented to me, I definitely would give it a passing score. Now, is it an A plus? No, it's got it's it's a long ways off from that. But this thing definitely got, uh, in my mind, this thing got a solid B. Yeah, I think it'll be able to replace us in the short term, not too far from now. Once you hey. connect it to to voice synthesis, mm -hmm. you just be able to someone will be able to tell it generate generate a special interest podcast about Finnish sauna from this perspective yep Re release an episode every so often you know use topics and anecdotes and news and then and then just send me the money you know yeah pretty yeah. soon this thing's going to be able to replace what we're doing here and and because I haven't hmm. met either Arrow or Risto in person yet I don't know that they're not AI <laughs> <laughs> On this happy note, yeah, it, 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 this was an awesome episode. Thank you so much, guys. We'll get together very soon again. The, very Thanks. cool. I, I hope everyone can can at least go try it out there. And and like Chris said, uh, take it with a grain of salt, but play with it. it you're not going to hurt anything. Go ahead, see what it can do, um, and ask it some questions about sauna and how how you could maybe improve your sauna experience. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Right, Pleasure. Thank bye you. Bye-bye.